This right here is the Gigabyte Aorus 10,000. It is the first Gen 5 SSD to hit the market, and as the name suggests, it should also be the first SSD to come close to that 10,000 megabytes per second barrier, which is about 50% uh, faster than what current Gen 4 SSDs can do. But as some of you remember, when first Gen 4 SSDs came out, they sounded pretty amazing on paper, but the first generation of drives wasn't that good at all, and it took quite a while till we got proper high-performing drives that we love and use today. So I am very curious to see how this very first Gen 5 drive will perform, uh, especially when it comes to some real-world tests, and if it will manage to leave the good old Gen 4 in the dust. Let's begin! Technically speaking, the Aorus 10000 seems very impressive. It uses Fison's new E26 Gen 5 SSD controller, which will probably be the standard controller you will find in pretty much every other Gen 5 SSD that will come out in the next few months. It uses Micron's latest 232-layer 3D TLC NAND, and of course, they added DRAM cache as well. The 1TB model gets 2GB of DRAM cache, which is twice as much as you would usually find on a high-end Gen 4 drive, and the 2TB model comes with a 4GB cache. There is no information about any 4TB drives just yet, but I really do hope they will come out eventually. Other than that, the specs are pretty basic. They have a sequential read and write performance claim, and you get a five-year-long warranty with total bytes written of 700 terabytes for the one terabyte model and 1400 terabytes for this two terabyte model, which is again above average. Now, realistically, you'll more likely to run out of that five-year-long warranty way before you write 1400 terabytes to a single drive. Now, power consumption is quite interesting as well. The specs claim it uses less than 10 watts under load, which is about double of what most Gen 4 drives will pull, but not so much that you would need some obnoxious cooling solutions with active fans. Nevertheless, Gigabyte did bundle this drive with a massive heatsink, and you might think it is because it will get massively hot, but that is not the case. They just reused their most high-end Gen 4 SSD heatsink that still has a little Gen 4 sticker on the side of it. But don't worry, uh, retail models will say Gen 5. This is just an early review sample. Do keep in mind that this oversized heatsink might be too big for some motherboards. It didn't fit on the Gen 5 slot of my ASUS Z790 Hero board, for example, and if that happens, you can just remove the heatsink and use the one that your motherboard comes with. Any Gen 5 slot has decent heatsinks, nowadays, so it shouldn't be a problem at all. But let's talk performance, and this time around, I'm actually going to start with sequential read and write numbers. Now, these numbers are not that relevant from a practical perspective, but uh, one of the points of Gen 5 SSDs is to break through that 7,000 megabytes per second barrier of the Gen 4 slot. In sequential writes, a gigabyte averages at around 9750 megabytes per second, with some peaks of over 10,000. So it is about 50% faster than anything last gen. In sequential reads, it was doing a bit over 9100 megabytes per second, which is about 36% faster than the top gen 4 drives. So the output is definitely a lot higher, but uh, since the theoretical limit of gen 5 SSDs is twice as high as gen 4, we still have a lot of room to cover. But let's look at some more realistic results, uh, starting with the PC Mark 10 quick test. And this is a great benchmark for anyone that wants to add a second SSD to their system. Uh, it is pretty much a collection of different tests that replicate all those little light things we do with our PCs every single day, which are not that heavy on the SSD. So uh, things like looking at photos, opening documents, and so on. And Gigabyte does great here. With an average result of 900 megabytes per second, it is over 20% faster than the extraordinary 990 Pro, and about 50 to 80% faster than most A-tier Gen 4 drives. The full PC Mark 10 suite is a test that replicates a more intense, more serious, and more consistent use of your drive. And I would say this is a very useful benchmark to look at if you're looking for a new main drive or for anyone that needs to run some applications that can be heavy on the SSD, like editing videos, for example. And again, the Aorus does really well here with an average result of 909 megabytes per second. That is 30% faster than the 990 Pro, 
42% faster than the SN850X and about 46% faster than the KC3000. And if we look at the average latency as well, it is once again a lot quicker than anything Gen 4. Now the PCMark consistency test is not really interesting for most people out there, but it is uh, great to see how a drive behaves under an extreme multi-hour workload that just stresses it to its very limits. And here the Aorus 10000 gets beaten by the 990 Pro, which just handles this extreme workload much better than other drives. But it is also beaten by the MP600 Pro LPX from Corsair. Now, given how each of the components of this drive is pretty much top tier, it does kind of feel like it maybe needs some firmware optimization to help it uh, deal with these extreme scenarios. So they should be able to improve this over time. Now gaming is another area where it also feels like Aorus 10,000 is not really reaching its full potential. Uh, if we take a look at the 3D Mark storage test, for example, which is a combination of benchmarks that include a lot of gaming related tasks, Aorus is in the second place. And while this is not a bad result per se, it is not the clear win that I expected to see based on the previous results. The WD Black SN850X does better overall, and other high-end Gen 4 drives like the KC3000 and the 990 Pro are really close to it. If we just look at the gaming results that I think are most important, uh, which is uh, loading times, installation times, and update times, it ends up scoring 91% of the fastest drive I tested so far, which is the SN850X. But let's check out the thermals. Now, obviously any SSD that can transfer 10 gigabytes in a single second needs some form of cooling and the massive heatsink included does a great job at keeping the temperature down. Now, with a tiny bit of airflow, it kept the SSD under 50 degrees Celsius during the entire consistency test, which is way cooler than it actually needs to be. So you don't really need such a large heatsink at all. As long as there is a little bit of airflow running by your drive, it will be completely fine under a regular motherboard heatsink or even a reasonable third-party heatsink that you can get on Amazon. But honestly, I actually think it performs better than I expected it to, considering it's a first Gen 5 drive that is. Uh, because as I said at the start, when Gen 4 SSDs came out, they were basically only faster than the Gen 3 drives in sequential performance while running way too hot. And it took quite a while for Gen 4 SSDs to really start making sense. And this Gen 5 drive is already showing pretty big improvements in regular use cases, and it's not that hard to keep it cool. So this is a great start and very good news for Gen 5 integration in general. But there's still some big things to think about and really consider before uh, rushing to the store to buy this drive right now. Now, the main thing is that it really feels like the firmware of this Aorus drive isn't completely optimized just yet. It definitely shows potential in some benchmarks, but in others, it barely showed any gains at all. And while I do expect it to perform even better in a few weeks or a few months, I do think it is wiser to wait and see how that develops instead of buying something this early and then waiting for it to improve. Also, other Gen 5 drives are coming out as well and waiting to see what the competition has to offer is always good as well. And last but not the least, not all systems support a Gen 5 SSD to begin with, and many that do, especially on the Intel side, will reduce the bandwidth available for your GPU. Now, new AM5 eBoards for AMD CPUs are the only ones that have that sorted completely, but it is more than fair to say that it will be a while until Gen 5 SSDs become more of a standard like Gen 4s are today. And the same can be said for pricing. It is not 100% clear how much these drives will cost, but the first listing I've seen for this 2TB model was $340 in the US. That is more than the 990 Pro, which is already heavily overpriced, and about twice the price of a good high-end Gen 4 SSD. In the Netherlands, the MSRP is set to 419 euros, but the prices in the actual shops will end up being a bit lower. Still, it is again more than twice the price of a nice Gen 4 alternative. So, unless you have some very specific use case that benefits from having that 10 gigabyte per second transfer speed, or you really want to uh, brag about being an early adopter, it doesn't really make sense to spend twice as much for this SSD. That being said, I do think it is really exciting to see the first Gen 5 drives show up, and I really do think it is important to take these steps forward in terms of uh, SSD technology and SSD performance, 
but it is still quite early and I just don't think it makes sense for a lot of people, or at least not just yet. That is all I have for today. Uh, before I go, let's check out the sponsor of this video. This video was brought to you by Corsair and their Elite LCD XD coolers. These premium all-in-one water coolers combine excellent performance with a fully customizable LCD screen that can showcase anything you have in mind. With a low noise pump and the AF Elite fans, they can easily keep up with the latest and hottest of processors out there while keeping your system quiet. You can install them on a variety of sockets, including the latest Intel and AMD ones, and once the installation is complete, you can use the IQ software to control the RGB effects or sync them with the rest of your Corsair gear. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching, I hope it was helpful enough. If you want to see more videos like this one, do consider clicking that subscribe button. Bye guys and see you in the next one!